It is an honor and pleasure to be here with Rabbi Dr. Bradley Shavit Artson, who is uh, the Dean of Ziegler School of Rabbinic Studies and the Vice President of American Jewish University in Los Angeles. Been a long time passionate advocate for social justice, human dignity, diversity, and inclusion, and is really the rabbi's rabbi um, out in the world as a, a first rate theologian and author and teacher. So I'm honored to have some time. My to pleasure talk with you. to be with you again. Thank you. Thanks. So to talk about to, um, the changes we're experiencing and what that means for Jewish life, potentially just American Jewish life for now, um, what are some of the changes you think we'll need to grapple with in terms of American demography, American Jewish demography, on the moral landscape, the spiritual landscape? I know it's a huge question, but what are some of those major changes we need to be prepared to So, address? you know, I, I think about the changing nature of Jewish life in the larger context of the changing light, nature of religious life in the larger context of mm -hmm. what does it mean to be human, Yeah, right? Because it's changing for everybody. The reality is that the social norms that we all were taught yeah. were built into nature, mm -hmm. they weren't. Yeah. And many of them have been overturned largely for the good, but things that were normal aren't anymore. And it's also true that people have a different sense of belonging. So we have this paradox of a more plugged in society with lonelier people mm -hmm. than I think we can ever remember before mm -hmm. and busier than ever before. Yeah. So all these time saving devices mm -hmm. are drowning us. Yeah. So how in that world in which old certainties are being challenged, some of them for the good, in which there's less and less leisure time perceived anyway, and more and more busyness, mm -hmm. how do you help people lift themselves yeah. above the din and find meaning and find mm -hmm. significance? Mm -hmm. And that afflicts the Jews as it afflicts everyone else. Yeah. But m my take on it has to be, what can I be doing to train tomorrow's leaders mm -hmm. so that they're in the position to give people a lifeline? Yeah so that they can throw people something mm -hmm. and keep them from drowning. So this technological adv advancement and the busyness and loneliness, you would see as the primary, the primary factor here. Well, yeah. so there are things that weigh in yeah. on that, right? So, yeah. so we turn to technological yeah. fixes right. for moral problems. Right. I think our culture, and you've yeah. spoken out on this, yeah. is profoundly alienating. Mm -hmm. People feel uprooted from who they are and who they're meant to be. Yeah. Life doesn't feel like it's full of joy and right. meaning and right. love. It feels like a struggle all the time. Yeah. Um, and then it gets exacerbated because what people put up on their social media are the right. moments of connection or joy. So we're all screening other people looking more connected mm -hmm. than we're feeling at mm -hmm. the moment we're looking, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So, so how do we help them to recognize that Judaism is this phenomenal wisdom literature, right. this incredible way of organizing life and community right. that has been building meaning and connection yeah. and lifting people above right. for thousands of years. Right. So one of the challenges is there is, is it's, an, it's an epistemological challenge of that this is not a hobby on the side. Like how do you build this framework of, of making meaning and connectedness into your daily life? Right, and I don't, and um, I'm not sure many are prepared to do that. Well, so let's take yeah. it from a couple different yeah. areas at once. Mm -hmm. One is practice. Yeah. Right. Anyone who I'm from LA, yeah. everyone's doing yoga in LA mm -hmm. except me. Mm -hmm. If they're not doing right, yoga, right, they're yeah. doing therapy, but right. they're doing something. Yeah, right, right. 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 To do to get something out of your yoga, it has to become a practice. Mm -hmm. It has to be something you take seriously. You can't say, "Yeah, I I, I, I do yoga twice a year." Yeah, you're not going to get anything right. out of it. It'll just hurt each right. time. Right. You can't grow from therapy yeah. if your therapy is well. I go twice in September, and then yeah. that's it for the year for me. Yeah. Right? You have to make yourself present and you have to make yourself vulnerable right. and you have to open yourself to it. Yeah. So one of the things I encourage people to do is without necessarily having theological commitments, yeah. give the practices a shot. Right. Try doing something for Shabbat. Right. And and here the perfect yeah. is the enemy yeah. of the good. Right. Do something. Like right. like if you're not doing anything for Shabbat, then have a meal with a friend on yeah. a Friday night. Yeah, yeah. And make Friday night your evening to be with a friend. Yeah. And then you can add something to that afterwards. You know, if you are, then take a moment to say yeah. something you're grateful for from yeah. the week or something you just want to say thank you right. out into the universe for. Yeah. There, there are all kinds of steps people can take 
Right. Sometimes I have people come to me and say, I can't pray. Yeah. We all have that struggle. Right. Some people have it more than others, and sometimes there's a subset who feel guilty about it or they feel right. bad about it. Right. So if I don't pray, yeah. when you wake up in the morning, sit on the edge of your bed and think about who you want to be yeah. today. Right. And then put that into words. Mm -hmm. Here's who I want to be. And at night, sit on your bed and think, how did I do yeah. with that? And what's one thing I want to say thank you for? Yeah. Don't worry about who you're thankful. I love that. The bracket in the in a postmodern era of skepticism to bracket our certainty or need for theological clarity yeah. and just do something. I was just thinking about how in Parsha Bereshi this week, Bereshi bara Elohim Elohim as Shemai read the arts that the first thing we learn about God is is action is doing something. Correct. And to emulate that is to say um, I might not have intellectual clarity, but I'm going to do something. Correct. Yeah. And the, the clarity comes if it comes at all in the doing. Right, because underlying that magnificent yeah. weird story yeah. is God obviously wanted to create. Yes. So right. what was going on? Because God never says, right. "Here's why I'm doing this." Right. It's just that God does it. Yes. Right. right? Yeah. So we can do that too. We can have a yearning and a sense that something's incomplete, something's broken, right. and I'm going to try these things and see if that feeling diminishes. Yeah. If I am able to feel a greater joy, a greater rootedness. Yeah. Right? I think that's part of it. I think the second piece is learning because mm -hmm. people are thinking, meaning making creatures. Mm -hmm. And our tradition is this phenomenal ongoing discussion mm -hmm. and raucous in disagreement and yes. in counter argument. Right. And so jumping right. in in a way that everyone can be there, whether you've learned before or not, whether you have this language or that language, right. you just get in there and, and jump in. Right, yeah, love it, love it. And you, I think you're right. Many assume that Judaism is going to be dogmatic and rigid mm -hmm. um, in a way, just in the realm of theology. You could be Maimonidean or embrace Hasidut, or as you've demonstrated in your own scholarship, embrace process theology or others. The spectrum is so huge for engagement. So let me ask you the next question. So um, the challenges are huge, and then there's the challenges you've spoken about, which we can't even anticipate. Right. Um, how do we individually, collectively, establishments, how do we begin to prepare for that? So one of the, the blessings and yeah. challenges of what I do, you know, the, the Torah brilliantly has Moses end on a mountaintop looking at where he wanted to go but mm -hmm. couldn't. Yeah. Right? And we do that too. So yeah. I train people who are going to enter a Jewish world that I'll never see. Yeah. Right? And if I'm yeah. good at what I do, I will give them enough training and skill yeah. that they'll know what to do with it right. when I'm going, boy, that beats me. Yeah, right. and, and frankly, yeah. I've done that already. Yeah. You know, I've been yeah. now training rabbis for 20 years. Yeah. I go to synagogues where someone, the rabbi turns and says, here's what we're doing, and I'm blown away because I would never have thought of it oh, in a million yeah, years. Yeah. Right. And then he tells his congregant, and I learned it from my rabbi, and points mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so training them for an open That's like Moshe Rabbi Akiva a little well, bit. It's yeah, completely, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So, right, yeah. so that's the dynamism is that the, the Rav trains the Talmud mm -hmm. to do things the Rav would never think of. Right, right. right, And in that sense, it's the Torah of Moses. Yeah. Right? It keeps going. So, so I believe that if we give people the learning, the questioning, yeah. the practice, and then one last thing. Yeah. Faith for us isn't putting our initials next to a doctrine. Yeah. Faith is faithfulness. It's not going away. I'm mm -hmm. going to be here for you. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. That's faithfulness. Right. So having that kind of faithfulness is core to Jewish life, right. too. I'm going to be present. Yeah. I'm not going away. Mm -hmm. I may not intellectually understand everything about who God is, but I know there's a connection that I have to something bigger than right. myself that helps me yeah. get up in the morning, helps me roll up my sleeves right. and try to make a difference. Yes. So that works, so what you're saying I think works broadly, but primarily for spiritual leaders. Yeah. And the Jewish community in many ways is run by business people. I mean, people on boards or those who are, their primary task is fundraising. How do those people think about change? I mean, there's always these million dollar prizes. How are we gonna save Judaism? Yeah, yes. so here's what I wanna fight against. Yeah. There are no those people. Uh huh. Yeah. Right, there are people who address it right. first. It, it's like the internet, right? Yeah. What's your portal of entry? Yeah. But you ultimately go everywhere. Mm -hmm. So there are people who start off asking the business questions, the budget questions. Thank God right. for those people. Right. They're the growers. Right. 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 And then there are yeah. the dreamers like you and me who have great big ideas, yeah. and then someone has to say, "Well, we can't afford that, <laughs> right. or right. we need to do this first. Yeah. Right. So, but so, but there's a deep spirit 
in the people who want the numbers to balance. Mm -hmm. There's a deep spirit in yeah. the people who want yeah. to create the structures mm -hmm. to allow the programs right. to exist. What we need to do is name it for them. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to tell them, yeah. this isn't just your MBA skills. Mm -hmm. Your MBA is about bringing order where there was yeah. chaos. Right. That's what God does, yeah. right? Back right. to your Bereshit yeah. story. Right. That's God is the one who yeah. does that. So, so what you're doing is tapping into your God-like nature yeah. to try to bring order. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful spiritual task. Yeah. I, I think that us seeing the world as us and them yeah. is part of the sickness. Well, speaking of the us and them, do you see any differences here um, in different religions? When uh, are, the, are the questions that Muslim Americans, Christian Americans, Buddhist Americans, etc., are asking, um, and are the challenges they're facing similar? Yeah, so the challenges they're facing are very similar. And here I want to use a Jewish mystical concept. The, the Zohar speaks about a lavush, a garment, mm -hmm. right? As opposed to the goof, the body that's yeah. under the garment. Mm -hmm. And garments both reveal and mask what they're clothing. Mm -hmm. Right? So yes, of course, the garment of Islam in America, the garment of Buddhism in America, the garment of Judaism, yeah. those are very different. Yeah. But they're still struggling with the same things. I spoke yeah. at a conference um, for Jains. Mm -hmm. Jains, a religion, comes out of India. It's mm -hmm. one of the world's nine biggest religions. Yeah. Um, they need to do better PR, but, <laughs> yeah, but right. it's a huge right. religion right. Right. With, with a lot of wisdom in yeah. it. Right. Um, they wanted to talk to me about how do we get our kids not to assimilate into American culture. <laughs> and I was shocked that they were asking exactly yeah. the same questions right. that a group of Jewish parents at a preschool yeah. would be asking as well. But they have different resources mm -hmm. for their answers mm -hmm. and different challenges that they have to overcome. Yeah. So one of the things I love is that we live in an age which we can learn from each other. Yeah. Right? We can listen to our Muslim neighbor and say, right. wow, that's really interesting. You're addressing a similar problem. I can't fix it the way you're trying to fix right. it, but what I can learn from it yeah. is something I haven't tried yet. Mm -hmm. And I think in that way, we're all in this together with different varieties of similar answers. Yeah, love that, love that. So I think my last question is, what what's a piece of Torah that you frequently return to that helps you to navigate periods of tension, periods of rapid change, um, to, that kind of grounds you in a particular wisdom. So one is a story yeah. and one is a verse. Great. The story is the arc of Moses's career. Mm -hmm. You know, he starts out enthusiastic right. and he's going to do everything. He's going to bring down this Pharaoh and he has great success. And by the end of his life, he's kind of a beaten, tired old guy. Yeah. yeah. And, and that gives us permission to yeah. be tired too. Yeah but he doesn't quit. Right. He goes all the way to the border, yeah. you know, and he goes until he can't go anymore. Yeah. So I take encouragement from that, that right. A, he also had bad days or bad spells, and and he didn't let that define him. Yeah. So I don't have to either. <laughs> and there's a line in Devarim, Lo tu chalahi dalem, you, you shall not remain indifferent. Hmm. And I think that's above and beyond any of the details of Jewish teaching, yeah. that's it is core. Hmm which is, it looks overwhelming, you're not allowed to be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So the issues of social injustice, the issues of the rudeness by which people treat each other, the kind of vulgarity that passes for okay in our culture, the reliance on brute force, like racism, all of it, right? You can't be overwhelmed, yeah. and you can't stop trying. Yeah. So that verse, Amazing. Lo Tuchal Gitala. Amazing. Well, please, uh, if you haven't already, check out Rabbi Dr. Bradley Ar Shavit Artson's uh, uh, books and check out um, uh, American Jewish University in L.A. And, and all the wonderful programs they're offering for students and for rabbinical students and for the broader community. Thanks Great. so much. Thanks a lot.